It's 24 hours to election day, February 25. But welcome to our election studios as we begin tonight and uh, talk about INEC laying the fears of cancellation and insisting that polls will hold. Also, we will be having a feel of what's going on at INEC offices from our correspondents across Lagos. Also, we'll be taking a look at government's reasons for the arrest of pro biafran agitator Simon Ekwa. And we'll be talking about the effects of violence on the outcome of the elections. I am Mary Anakon. Welcome to The Ballot. My name is Nyamgul Agaj, and I'm glad to be here with you. All right, interesting. It promises to be 24 hours of back-to-back -back information uh, for uh, the elections. Uh, I I'm sure that you're excited. Well, everybody's excited in Nigeria. Even the people that are not voting are really excited. I know. It's a defining moment for us. And... Uh, I hope we get it right this time. Apparently, everybody keeps saying every election cycle that this is going to be, you know, a watershed moment. We hear that every time. But yes, really, but we've not seen the kind of entrance, new entrance into the election cycle like we've seen now. Mm -hmm. the, the massive uh, registration of the youths has never happened the way it has happened this time around. Mm -hmm. So no matter the excitement, excitement has always been for the people who are regular voters. Mm -hmm. Now we have people who have never voted forming almost the majority of the people who registered. I hope they got their PVCs anyway mm -hmm. after registering. Well, let's uh, have a feel of what's going on um, in Ikeja right now. Our correspondent, Paul George, is standing by uh, to brief us, uh, brief us on what's happening there. Good evening, Paul. How are you? Great. Uh, you are in Ikeja. What exactly have you noticed uh, while you were there at the INEC office? Um, what is the latest? Okay, when we got to Ikeja, GRA, the INEC office, you know, we met a lot of core members and ad hoc staff, you know, who um, have been gathered here, you know, to move to different words of this, um, for the election tomorrow. You know, the INEC um, electoral officer here in Ikeja, um, Gabriel Tyree, you know, when I spoke to him, I asked him how prepared are they, and he explained to me, he said they are well prepared for this election. And um, at, the, at that moment, there were a lot of, you know, ad hoc staff who are still waiting, who are still waiting to move out, to go to their ward, you know, waiting for their SPO, that is supervisory presiding officers, to take them to their different uh, rack center. You know, we have... We, we have, right now, as I'm speaking with you, we have members of the Nigerian police force, you know, you know, guarding this environment, you know, to also forestall law and order here. Well, yeah, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, Paul, um, right now you are at the INEC office, right? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I think yes, he is. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I'm at the INEC office. Okay. In Ikeja, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm just interested in the fact that at the background we're not seeing a rowdy crowd and all that. Those, these are things that usually happen uh, at, in this, other, time at this time of the year. So uh, what do you think made it so peaceful the way it is? Is there anything new okay, that has good, not been fantastic. done before? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. That's good. Uh, you know, we have Nigerian police force here, member of the Nigerian police force. You know, they are here to ensure that everyone, you know, go... Uh, do everything in order, in, and we also have the um, what's it called the road safety. They are all around here. So the what, now you mentioned something that the the you feel looking at looking at at, at my background that the core members a lot of people you know have left. Yes, they have left because they've gone to their rack centers you know to be prepared because they are going to sleep over. They are going to sleep over you know to. Um, then from there they move to the their unit. You know, according to the uh, Gabriel Tyree, the electoral officer here in Ikeja, he said they have over 600 over 600 polling units. You know, in this Ikeja local government. Okay. All right, Paul. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll be getting back to you for more updates. Thank you for speaking with us. All right. Thank you. 
Well, barely six hours to the forthcoming 2023 general uh, elections, of course, the presidential election. Uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has allayed fears of cancellation and insisted that the poll will hold as planned on February 25. INEC Chairman Mahmoud Yakubu disclosed this on Friday at a media briefing in Abuja. His assurances came a few hours before the presidential poll started. Uh, slated for Saturday, I beg your pardon, February 25th, 2023. Now, according to him, there has been no insecurity issue involving the personnel and materials deployed by the commission. Joining us live to discuss the voter readiness for the polls is our correspondent, Emmanuel Olubobokon. Emmanuel, thank you very much for joining us. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Emmanuel, what's the situation where you are right now? Okay, uh, right here at, in the church at the church of GRA, we, uh, you know, I was able to speak with the uh, voters uh, about whether they were able to get their uh, proposals and also whether there were challenges associated with them getting to the old region you know, under the fine their polling units. But speaking with some of them, I realized we, I was able to get information that the polling units, irrespective of the distance or server, they were able to locate it. Some of them said there were no challenges. But speaking with one particular person, he said that the polling unit was far from his residence. But today, while he was at uh, Jumat prayer today, uh, been Friday, uh, he said that the Imam spoke to him and preached to him, saying that they, they were irrespective of whatever it is, that they should be able to go and exercise their civic duty. So that he had, with that, he had a change of mind and said, irrespective of distance, it doesn't mind trekking far distance to definitely go uh, cast his vote. So that's been challenging the situation over here uh, with voters and also with uh, staffs of uh, ADO. Well, thank you very much for speaking with us. We will come back to you if there be any uh, breaking stories or any more to, uh, things to report on. Um, we will take a quick break. When we return, we'll be talking about the um, situation of things uh, in Finland. Mm. Of course, uh, <laughs> yesterday the news was that um, one of the masterminders of the um, insecurity in the southeast, uh, talking about Simon Ekwa, was arrested by Finnish police. Yeah, yeah and, and there's been propaganda anyway. Some people, maybe loyalists to him, are now saying that he has been released and back into uh, back to Finland, and he's enjoying himself and all, and all that. But uh, I'd like to commend Finland. I'd like to commend uh, the government of Nigeria. And Interpol. And e even Ohanez Ndibo, that all people that raised alarm yeah. that this person is causing havoc back home here. And proactive measures led to what has uh, happened now. And we are, we we'll be the better for it anyway. Yeah. We'll be having some guests join us to discuss this uh, in a moment. But we'll take a quick break. It's still our election studios, The Ballot 2023. Stay with us. It is unusually traffic-free here. Plus, TV News catches up with some Nigerians who give different reasons for wanting to cast their ballots. Why not? Why not? You can see I'm just coming back from work and I have my PVC to vote for the candidate I want. You can see. Yeah. So I'm praying, let the gods help us and reach the, the final day for the election. And I will know the candidate I will vote. I'm not someone that is actually scared. Whatever comes up, whatever it might be, I will stand and vote. In so many years, I haven't casted a vote, but this time around, I am definitely going to cast my vote. I'm not scared of anything. I'll come out and vote. We should be ready for change. Uh, we can't continue here. We can't continue like this. Else we keep on going Where? in circle. We have to change the order, like seriously. Where if not, Nigeria will just continue suffering. There has been a high level of preparation towards the elections, especially from the part of the election umpire, INEC. 
Many believe this is a chance to have a Nigeria of their dream, as for the first time the country is adopting an electronically conducted federal elections. The change in this country, I'm actually tired of the way things are going. Uh, the situation is now, nah, it's not really for me, it's about, you know, everybody seems to be leaving the country because things are not going well. But those of us that have not had the opportunity to probably leave should stay back and do the needful. The good things come with a bit of inconvenience. And uh, what you look at is the intent behind it. Is the intent just to suffer, uh, make the masses suffer? Quite all right, the masses are suffering because of it. But if it will help us curtail vote buying, if it will, it, it will help uh, put those corrupt politicians in check, desperados in check. So be it. I will come out to vote. Well, for the cashless uh, policy now, that reason why we are stuck fully in the house for the family's issue. So well, after the election, maybe we... For free and fair election, you understand. But I wish Nigeria all the best. And this time, accrediting voters and voting will take place simultaneously with the use of the Beavers machines. The stakes are high. Destin Mama, Plus TV News. Welcome back. It's still the ballot 2023 and uh, we are still looking at the situation of things in and across the country on this situation of election violence, yeah. pre-election violence, vote buying. Let's talk about vote buying. Um, we've seen videos from River State, emanating yeah. from River State, where um, the police uh, had, the FCC, I beg your pardon, had napped one of the um, PDP... Yeah, House um, of Reps member. member PDP representing, representing Port Harcourt 2 constituency. Yes. And um, uh, Honorable Chief Nyere Igwe. Um, yeah. Well, first of all, Bajabi Amila is talking about the fact that they need to remove honorable from their names. Mm. <laughs> Maybe this is the time to start. Because this they, must have been a very dishonorable act. Very, very dishonorable I mean, act. he was photographed with wads of cash. Um, and and you, you know, this money, And it wasn't dollars, Nigerian money, dollars, foreign currency. Dollars, like $500,000. And we are suffering the way we're suffering. We've seen another video uh, just this evening about... Uh, where someone was trying to buy votes here in Lagos State, watts and watts of money, uh, new 1,000 naira notes, exactly. the so much money, money that we cannot even find, 5,000 to mm -hmm. withdraw, and people, the sharks, now the POS sharks are taking advantage and, and destroying businesses, destroying lives, as it were. Unfortunately, uh, it's not their fault, but we're not going to get into that conversation because, you see, they also have to buy the we money. Won't to sell to we won't even Nobody finish. would have thought that in 2023, you would need to buy Naira with Naira. Yeah, we, we're asking, how much is exchange rate in your, in your <laughs> area? Naira to Naira. It's not even dollars. Mm. It's, it's really disheartening. And yeah, to, it's very, to very think that some people are just holding think, this money. And, and I think um, what's most disheartening about the Honorable Chinyuri Grace situation is that he's an honorable member of the House of yeah. Assembly, yes. uh, the National Assembly, I beg your pardon. He's a, a member of the People's Democratic Party. In which is state, ruling in River which, State. Which is ruling in River State. And one would think that um, being that uh, um, Governor Wiki is um, called, um, you know, the Mr. Projects, and that the state would mm. not have to worry, uh, the government would not have to worry about vote buying, but this is a situation that uh, we're looking at today, unfortunately. Well, uh, and another thing is, um, INEG defines vote buying as inducement, inducement. using in the, on that day of the election, and I think that's a very shallow uh, uh, definition yes, of that Yes, because I have seen a lot of um, pundits speak about this issue of vote buying, and, and they say, Vote buying has already occurred. It has, it has started. Day. I got calls from the village, for instance, that uh, the people who are going around sharing wrappers mm -hmm. and sharing money. And and bags of rice. There are governors who, who started an empowerment program like two just, months ago. Just, you know. just two weeks, Seth. Some people started yeah. two weeks, house just, to house. And they'll, they'll tell you that it will end when this administration, after the election and all that. Mm. And it tells you that it has to do with the elections. And you're collecting this money. And if, if you say four people in a polling unit, that means 
four families have been have been affected mm -hmm. for those four families will have like 10 people in the families and then 10 people will, will have influencers mm. within the community and all that they've already bought mm. that community as it were and it started long before now but efcc INEC, and all the relevant authorities are not even looking at that well they seem to be alive to the responsibilities uh, just in the nick of time for some people you know i mean they're now awake because the elections are just around the corner but let's talk about the the voter now, the electorate, because I want to talk about how decisive we should be uh, or questioning certain things. Because you see, if I have sat through an administration for four to eight years and you didn't think it necessary to um, initiate an empowerment program all this while, but then months to elections, weeks to elections, you come up with this empowerment program, this giving scheme, you mm. know, I, we should be, some critical thinking needs to come into play. But then, of course, many people would also say, what well, uh, poverty has been weaponized. And so, I mean, the well, other I, person... I don't, I don't buy the poverty thing. Exactly. But then there are people who have that school of thought that, oh, poverty has been weaponized. If you're a hungry person and you see food, you're definitely going to jump on it. But what if that food is laced with poison? Should I not think first before I die, I, I, you know, I jump in? It, I think when we talk about po poverty, we shouldn't be talking about poverty, cash poverty, material poverty. It's a well, poverty, poverty of the mind. Of the mind. Yeah, Absolutely. because I've seen people who... Who pack their vehicles, for instance, and come to struggle for twenty thousand that was thrown into a crowd? Mm. But you're packing your car. Mm -hmm. That means you are well to do before mm. you can have a car, and mm. then you're still struggling with the people that people are saying are poor. That's not poverty. Mm. I, I, I've seen a place where you go to that place, food is not a problem, mm. and then people are handing out fifty naira, as low as fifty naira mm. and a hundred naira, and they're voting for someone. It's like. Like we would say, no, we do be that. <laughs> I, I saw a video, uh, a report um, on Dosh Vela mm. uh, done by a Nigerian, and she went to, I think, one of the states in the north, if I'm not mistaken, Adamo State, and people voted for as low, people, people's votes were bought for as low as 50 naira. Good. I've seen that a too. A school teacher is taking upon himself to educate people in that area because of the level of Ill Ill illiteracy. Um, but then, of course, he's, he's also not just blaming it on ignorance, he's blaming it on the fact that people... Um, have, like you said, have poverty, a poverty mindset. Yeah. Um, and it's not that they, they do not know that what they're doing is wrong, but they feel that that's the only hope that they have. And his duty is to, um, one way or the other, um, change that mindset. And he's doing it every day. He's telling people that 50 Naira is unable to even buy you a plate of food or the meat that you would eat in mm. the food let alone take you for four years. So what happens after the election? Are you able to see these people? Are they accessible to you? Can you call them to order? Can you ask for accountability if you've taken 50 naira because it's literally put a plaster or a sellotape over your lips? At this point, I think the elitist class have not, has not done enough to educate everybody because if, if your mind is educated enough, your brain is educated enough, uh, someone said education makes you uh, unfit to be enslaved mm. so uh, if your mind's mind is educated enough you are sh supposed to be the person to take this evangelism as, as mm. it were to the villages and all that because this is where it actually happens you can't expect someone to buy votes for even five thousand naira in vi for instance you you won't oh, but you will be shocked because there are people who the people who are giving these monies the people who are foot soldiers to these so-called politicians yeah it shocked it, it'll shock you that they're people like you and me yeah, so but they're not people, giving to the people in VI. They yeah, will go and give to the I'm people. Saying. And unfortunately, so this is where you, you we find we the population. Ourselves it's, because we're part we're not, of the we're problem. We're not, we're not doing enough. We know what's right, but we'd rather, because of whatever Greed. reasons, Greed. yes, enable these so-called um, you know, corrupt politicians. So really, how ready are we for that change? We are not re really ready. Because uh, in the 2019 election, there were a lot of people that that are now fighting wars in the social media uh, with themselves some of them actually contested you know they, they ran for president some of them ran for president and they're among the people who are supporting candidates that we we see or we perceive that shouldn't even rule us so how are these people sincere to the people are they there for personal interest or they really wanted to help our nation 2023 has proven that a lot of them were just there for their selfish reason. And, mm. and when politicians in Nigeria say what matters is interest, mm. it, really, it really sets me off. Because the interest they're talking about is not 
the national interest. They're talking about personal interest. And they mm. do it with their full chest, as we would say in Nigeria. Mm. And it's really disappointing. I, I want us to go to talk about the situation in Finland and talk about the the uh, state of violence mm -hmm. that has taken hold of the southeast mm -hmm. in general uh you and i are going to banter on that but in the meantime we're going to be joined by our correspondent loretta chiogo who's standing by to give us a, a feeler on what's happening in magboro area of lagos state and um, um uh, i think festec um so um let's see if um, we can get across to loretta uh, loretta good evening thank you for joining us can you hear me Marianne, good evening. I'm good. Good evening. Great. Good evening. What's happening in Magboro? Uh, <laughs> uh, <studios>, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Welcome to our election studios. Now, um, give us a feel of what's happening in Magboro. And um, are, have you been speaking to people? And is there some sort of excitement or doubt or maybe fear uh, coming from the people as they get ready for tomorrow's elections? Now, from what I've been able to gather, the general feel is that of excitement. Is that of enthusiasm to go into this poll tomorrow and people are just ready to choose their candidates come tomorrow morning and uh, you know what's amazing is that the road is the roads are not too busy mm -hmm. as it usually would be um the reason for this i do not know but i know that Feelers are also that uh, people are trying to stay away from anything that can cause them harm in case there's any uh, breakdown of um, law and order, right? Mm -hmm. And from Magoro area, which is within Ogo State and borders Lagos, the feel, um, as I said earlier, is that of excitement and enthusiasm. And voters are already trying to find out where their polling units are. In fact, as you can see, I'm in a, I'm in a, uh, in a vehicle, and we're trying. We've been roving from Magboro and then down into Lagos to to also uh, feel what to feel the pulse of the people. And uh, the driver of this particular vehicle has told me that he doesn't even know where his polling unit is. And because he, he, uh, another person who I spoke with earlier told me that he had to take time out to go look for his polling unit where he's going to vote and and found out that the, the polling unit wasn't where he was told. And because he was frustrated and because he also knows that I'm a journalist, he had to put a call through to me to ask me if I, I have an idea of the polling units within Magburu, and I told him some of them, but he said he was frustrated as, as of that time and that he was not going to look for the polling units anymore until tomorrow if he now decides to move up. But I think the feel is that of I am going to vote, come what's me. Mm. So for these two men that I've been able to speak with, I think that's the, that's the general feel. People want to come out to cast their ballot. They want a new Nigeria. They want a real a real change, and when I mean a real change, they want a real change that can speak for, you know, their livelihood, yeah. the economy, infrastructure, education, health, the health system, name it. Marianne? Yambu? Yes, mm. let's talk about um, the issue of information dissemination, both from INEC and uh, and the media, because of course it's the, it's the information that INEC rolls out that the media feeds to the public. Um, judging from what your your driver, the driver of the vehicle, has uh, mm -hmm. you know spoken about, um, do you think that INEC has done due diligence in terms of, especially the fact that some of these polling units were reassigned, mm -hmm. unknown to you know some of the voters? I can't speak for INEC, but I can speak as a journalist. <laughs> so, uh, reports that we have um, received from INEC is that they've been able to pass this message to the public. Now, the public, that we, we need to now look at the public who has heard INEC and the public that has not heard INEC. So that's dicey right now. No. We need to understand those who, who have been able to accommodate the information and run with it. But I think INEC has done the bits that they should, which is to speak to the public about the, the various changes that has or that have taken place in terms of changing polling units, taking one from another, fixing people in other polling units. Now, do the people know where where their new polling units are? I think that will play out tomorrow. We'll see more of that tomorrow because right now, 
what we can see is that people are just trying to find out where their exact polling units are and to identify with the place to, to be uh, satisfied that it is trackable. Because again, distance is another issue. Um, somebody told me that if the polling unit is too far from where he lives, he may not, may not be able to go to cast his ballot. But of course, these people have been encouraged to say, look, you are called for a team. You have said um, your vote would count. So no matter the distance, I think you should do that as a sacrifice for Nigeria and for your generation and future generations to come. Well, Larissa, we look forward to um, some of the things that will be covered tomorrow yeah. and all of the information that will be coming from the different places that you go to and the polling units. Thank you so much. We appreciate That's it. That's right, and I think you can identify me with my face cap. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So, I'm not a security threat. I need to put this out now. I'm not a security threat. I'm a journalist, <laughs> and my face cap identifies. Yes, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure by the time you start speaking English, they definitely yeah, stay safe wherever you are, Loretta. Thank you very much. Thank sure. you. Sure. Okay, she touched on something about yes, uh, the roads fun. being the roads being free, and uh, it didn't start this evening. It started even in the morning, the morning when we were yes. coming to work. Everywhere was very free, and the, mm. the vehicles were moving. I think we owe that not just to security, but we owe that to the fact that I, that's what I want to believe that people are spending the time looking for where they're supposed to go and vote. And some of them are resting so that tomorrow yeah, might be a long day. most of them have traveled to their different yes, polling units. to their different polling units. Yes. So, so that's, that explains why the roads were like that. So let's believe. Yeah. And we had a security expert this morning who said yeah. that from all indications, tomorrow will be relatively very peaceful. And, and, and we all want to believe that because yeah. we, we have no reason to believe that there would be any chaos or, um, you know... Um, uprisings or riots i don't think it's necessary because i think the average voter is ready to cast their votes peacefully and make sure that it counts we'll take a quick break it's still our election studios the ballot 2023 i'm sure people are wondering where's the plus politics <laughs> it's right here and this is where we have this is what we have metamorphosed into <laughs> until elections are over we'll take a quick break and when we come back we'll talk about finland and then of course we will be joined by um, um, an, uh, an election um, uh, consultant who's going to talk to us about the issue of violence before, during and after elections and how it could affect uh, the country. Stay with us.